Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's pack program, I'm going to be looking at the wider picture. And as per the title of this video, I'm going to be looking at a few charts which nobody seems to be watching and they are showing and why this may well be your last chance to get into Bitcoin or even the Bitcoin miners. I'll also have a look at the wider markets to see what's happening in the background and make head or tail of the current price for Bitcoin and what's ahead for it. And of course, we're going to have the Bexit countdown. We're going to have a look at one more Bexit indicator telling us exactly where we are in the current cycle. So if that sounds interesting, then you know what to do. Get yourself a cup of tea, sit yourself down, eyes on the screen and let's get cracking. But before I begin, the usual polite reminder, please remember everything in my videos is just for educational purposes. So please always do your wider research before you make any investment decisions or any swing trade decisions. Okay, before I go into the charts that show exactly why this may well be the last opportunity for people to get on board the Bitcoin train, a quick mention about the halving and what's happened after the halving very unexpectedly. And as we know, the Bitcoin halving, which was on Saturday two days ago, it was going to reduce the supply that was being mined by the Bitcoin miners from 900 down to 450. But since the halving over the last two days, what we've seen is the transaction fees have gone completely through the roof, which means that the number of Bitcoins mined, it is still 450, but the Bitcoin fees, which is paid in Bitcoins, has gone up substantially. And what that really means in terms of the numbers of Bitcoins being mined, if I show you the Mara pool, which is the pool that includes Marathon Digital Holdings, so you can see this is the cutoff point for the halving. So before this point, here, Marathon were mining 6.27, 9.2, 6.5, 6.7, 7.1, so just around about the six and a half. And above the line, after the halving, the number of Bitcoins they're mining is 1960 was the first one, then 1314, 5.4, 5.23, 8.1, and the recent one a couple of hours ago at 4.18. So you can see because of the transaction fees, the mining on average very similar to what they were before. So a lot of negativity that was surrounding around the Bitcoin miners that their earnings are going to be halved because of the amount of reward that was going to be halved after the halving. At the moment anyway, two days in, doesn't seem to have materialized. But obviously there's a long way to go and we'll see when the Bitcoin fees have settled down. And currently the state of play for the Bitcoin fees per day, as you can see just yesterday over the 24 hour period, the fees had gone ballistic to 55 million per day. But since then, they've actually come back down. If you have a look at the year to date figure, we can see that over the last two days, the figure has been the highest it's ever been since the start back in 2010. So these are the fees regarding Bitcoin mining transaction fees. And all of a sudden after the halving, it's just completely shot up. So we'll see how long they last, but they have actually come back down to actually below the zero here. But there seems to be a period of settling in and we'll see how this develops over the next few weeks. But very interesting stuff and all going on in the background of Bitcoin. Right, so we're going to have a look at a couple of charts which are going to show us exactly the types of things that nobody seems to be watching and why those charts may well be telling us that those who haven't got on the Bitcoin train may be about to miss out on one of the biggest moves in four years. So let's have a look here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this full chart, this default setting chart that we've got for the four year cycle. And I'm going to add onto this our favorite indicator for the Bexit, and that is the Pi cycle. So I'm going to have a look at the Pi cycle from a completely different angle this time. And that is looking at the number of candles, the monthly candles, which go above the red line, which is the 350 simple moving average. So I'm going to look at it cycle by cycle. So we'll go into the first cycle here to give you a very good overall picture of what's developing over the last four cycles. So we'll have a look at the first cycle here. So I'm going to build up a picture for you. A lot of people keep asking me where this bull market is going to end and when it's going to end and exactly what price it may do that. Obviously, I don't have a crystal ball. All I can do is elicit the information from the charts and give you some sort of a good guidance. So these are some of the facts in the charts that I'm looking for you to add value to your understanding of exactly where Bitcoin may well be going. And while we know the cross of the green line, like here, over the red line, will give us the top of the bull market, it would also be very interesting to know the journey 
that that top actually takes. And one of the ways to look at it is to look at the number of months after it has closed above the red line it takes to get to this very top here. So for instance, if we take all the other lines away, we can see that this candle is the first candle after the bull market starts here where we see the first monthly candle close above the red line, this 350 simple moving average of the pi cycle. And the number of candles it gets to, to the top, and if we count the candles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 candles it took to get to the top of the bull market. So we can write in 11 candles here. Then in the second cycle, which ended in December 2017, after the bear market and the beginning of the bull market, the first candle was this one here that breached and closed above the red line. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candles to the top here. And the last cycle, we can see clearly it was this candle that went above the red line once the bull market had started. And you've got one, two, three, four, five candles to the 64,000. And if you want to count the 69,000, then that would give you six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 candles. Now, the reason why I think it's better to count the five is because that's where the cross of the pi cycle was. So that would give you a total of three cycles with 11, eight, and five. That's a diminishing number of candles after hitting the top of the red line of the pi cycle. So if you average those out, that would be about eight months. And we know that this cycle is different simply because we came before the halving and beat our previous all-time high for the first time since the inception of Bitcoin in 2010. So this cycle is different and the falling number of months may be leading us to think that it may well be before five months. So we've had 11, eight, and five so far. So this is where we are currently. None of the candles in this bull market has breached the red line yet. We haven't closed above it. So this is something we need to be aware of. As soon as we close a monthly candle, it may well be the current one. We've got eight days to go, but if we made a quick run up here, though it may well be, we may have only around about the five to eight months before we reach the top anywhere around here. So we need to have a look at where this price could go. And we had a look at some of the target prices looking at the Fibonacci retracement in the last video. And today I'm going to look at the target in a completely different way to the Fibonacci retracement to give us a broader understanding of what Bitcoin could possibly do. Okay, I'm going to just go back to one cycle and that is the last cycle that we had from 2018 to 2021. And what we want to do is to determine what target we may possibly get over here. Please remember, this is not my prediction. These are possible targets based on eliciting information from the charts. And then you can do whatever you want with those targets. So if you look at the previous cycle, that gives us a a clue as to what may well happen here. So when you look at this on the monthly chart, we can see that the bodies of the candles are the resistance points along here. So if you take them from the bodies, this is giving us a clue that when we broke out at this point, the increase from the bottom to that resistance point was around about 310%. And when you measure from that line in terms of the potential rise for the end of the bull market to the bodies of the candles here, was around about 353%. So very much in the ballpark figure of what happened over here. So if what happened in the last cycle was to repeat in the current cycle, and it may or may not be the case, but it gives us some sort of an idea, an alternative view to looking at a potential target. So at the tops of the bodies of these candles here where it topped out, if we go across from there and measure from the bottom here at 15,400 where it bottomed out, that gives us approximately a 300% increase. So a 300% increase from the top here would take us around about to the 240,000. So this is where it's giving you a ballpark figure. And of course, we've got the pi cycle cross. So when that crosses, and let's say the price is around the 230, 240,000, then we know that there's a confluence of a few indicators that are telling us that. And of course, we're gonna have a look at the Bexit indicators to provide further confluence of that. But certainly, everything seems to be pointing in this direction between the 150 and the 300,000, as we saw from last week's video using the Fibonacci retracement. And for those of you who didn't watch that video, you can see from here, the Fibonacci retracement takes us between the 1.618, which is what I showed you last week, and these two figures here, these two lines, the 2.36 and the 2.272. So anywhere between this level is where we're expecting it. And this method of calculating it is also pointing in this direction.
around about here. So I hope you found that interesting. And what would actually confirm this measure from the bottom at 15.4 to the neckline around about the 60,000 would be a cup and handle pattern here. So if this price came back down, which I'm not expecting, but if it came back down to this trend line, then you'd get a cup and a handle. And in classical charting, the measure from here to there actually becomes incredibly valid and quite accurate. So more on that as the weeks go on. Okay, so moving on in terms of what may happen to the Bitcoin price. So in the short term, if we have a look at the liquidation heat map, we can see quite clearly the yellow lines are appearing one more time. And these are, of course, the liquidation levels for the leverage players. And more yellow lines here have started appearing one more time. And they're at around about the 64,000. So you may well see the price come back down, take these out before moving to the higher side. And the reason why it should go to the higher side is because at 67,000, as you can see, there's also some more leverage positions here, which are to the downside. So these are the shorts and their stops, and these are the longs and their stops. So it looks to me as though the Bitcoin price may well be range bound for a while in order to take out these liquidation leverage players. Okay, in last week's video, I actually showed you the eight EMA and why we should keep an eye on this and why that's telling us something about what's about to happen over the next few weeks with Bitcoin. And that is that when you put the eight EMA, and when I showed you this on Friday's video, it was down here around about the 60,000. And I said, wait until the end of the week to see whether we recover this eight EMA. And what it's doing is building up a pattern here of long wicks at the bottom. And we know what happens when there are long weeks at the bottom. That means that there's a huge amount of demand at these prices, which is going to be the fuel for the prices to go up much further. So every time the price goes below to certain levels, around about the 60,000, there's a huge amount of demand that comes in and buys it all up. And that's telling us that the price is unlikely to go back down to these levels. Of course, it can do, but the probability seems to be getting less and less as these wicks are getting more and more. So once again, we've recaptured the 8 EMA and we closed the week yesterday above the 8 EMA one more time. Since we got above it here, back in October, you can see we found incredible support all the way along here multiples of times. So this is a line that the whole of the Bitcoin price is giving a lot of respect and relevance and importance to. Okay, I'm going to move on to the wider markets, have a quick look at what's happening with the SPX. And we've been following this under the template of the 60 day cycle. And what we've really got here is a failed cycle going below the start of the cycle here. And I gave the levels in the previous two videos for the SPX to go down to the 5000 level. And this is what's happened here. We've gone to that level and gone below it. So the next target is going to be this one here at around about 4,900. And I would expect some sort of a bounce at this point. And should we lose that, we're going to come back down to the 4,800. Now this is something I would not expect it to go down here. So this is a very strong support line and resistance point. So the two points what I think may happen is bounce from here and start a new cycle or come back down to these levels at 4,800 before the new cycle starts. So keep an eye on that. But certainly this was predicted to go into the 60 day cycle, but it's obviously gone deeper as it's breached our first target of 5,000. It did try to find support, as you can see, with those two candles, but it's obviously got a momentum to the downside, which is greater than the pressure to the upside. So keep an eye on this. And the fact that we've just shown you that the Bitcoin has actually recaptured the 8 EMA. So there's relative strength in the Bitcoin price relative to the SPX. Now, sometimes they do actually correlate, but sometimes they do diverge. And it looks to me currently they're diverging away. And this is one of the other reasons why I don't think Bitcoin is going to come back down to the 52, which has still got a probability of around about 20%. But the the greater probability is to actually go back towards the 70,000. And looking at the dollar, what it's really telling us is that there's a lot of bullish momentum going on with the dollar. We've gone above this trend line at this moment here. We had a big breakthrough. We've come back and retested this line here, but we do have an indecision candle on the weekly chart. So it has a decision to make which way it wants to go. And any talk of an interest rate cut will bring this down. And so far, because the Fed has been talking down any prospect of an interest rate cut, 
anytime soon. This has obviously pushed this to higher levels. So we'll see what happens, but this is certainly something to look out for because this will feed into the wider markets and keep them subdued as long as the dollar keeps going up. And moving on to gold, we can see quite clearly we've broken out this neckline here as we've been following the progress of the gold price and we've now come to some sort of a consolidation here and this particular move as you can see we're consolidating around about the top third of that move. So this looks quite bullish to me on the weekly chart. But when we look closer, you'll see that there is a gravestone doji candle here. And that's this candle at this point. And so what's that really saying is that in the short term, we may well have a period of consolidation or even come back to lower levels, maybe down to these levels here at around about 22. And if we have a look at the monthly chart, it's looking incredibly bullish here. We've had a second candle on the monthly now following up from the big breakthrough from the neckline. And as I I've mentioned many times gold appears to be in a six to twelve month bull market and I can only see this go much further up. So how does all that fare with the Bitcoin price on the 60 day cycle template? Well we've got a day 57 bottom for a new cycle and we were expecting this to go into the midpoint and come back into the midpoint for a correction before we made a higher high here above these points. But instead Bitcoin's gone through the scenic route as usual. But what was threatening here was a failed cycle and we didn't close below this point. So because there's no close yet, we have a double bottom at the moment rather than a failed cycle. So what we can see from the current price action is for the price to be recovering here. So let's see where this goes. If it can go there, then this becomes a right translated cycle one more time before the low into the 60 day cycle end and a new cycle to begin. And that would help us to go much further up. But there's a lot of hurdles for it to cross before that can happen. But what we are seeing is there's a great demand at the $60,000 mark, as we saw with the wicks on the weekly chart. So in terms of the strategy, I can only share with you my own thoughts and my actions and the decisions that I'm making. I'm fully invested, as you know, with the Bitcoin miners. And at this current position, as we've seen with the background of the wider markets, as well as how Bitcoin has fitted in, it doesn't look to me as there's a very high probability for the price to come back down below the 60,000. And those people waiting below the 60,000 to buy Bitcoin at the 50,000 or the 48,000, etc., or the 40,000 down here. So these levels seem like a low probability for the Bitcoin price to come back down to. However, having said that, if the Bitcoin price was to form some sort of a cup and handle pattern here, then obviously this price may well come back to these support levels, which have been actually there as a very strong guide as to which way the price of Bitcoin is going. But on a risk reward basis, it seems to be much more riskier to be out of the market than in the market. So if I was playing this, I would be invested as much as I could at this point. And if you wanted to take a 25% risk that if the price comes back down here, you could use that 25% at these levels, you could get lucky. But on a balance of probabilities, it's more likely to do that rather than to come back down here. So that 25% may have to be bought at a higher price. And that's the risk you would take in terms of playing that strategy of trying to dollar cost average at these levels down here. And everybody has to make their own decisions. I can only share with you what my strategy is, and that is to be fully invested at this point and to ride out any of these dips and use them as buying opportunities but there's certainly no way I'm going to be shaken out until the very end, wherever this is going to be at the top. And now it's time for the favorite part of our video. Yes, you've guessed it, the Bexit countdown. And the one I want to look at today is called the top and bottom indicator. And the way you get that is by typing in the search bar, top and bottom, and it's this one here, by the prof, I the professor. And to make this work, we have to go to the weekly chart and we can see quite clearly here that the green zone is where the bottoms are. The red zone is where the tops are, there and there. Once again, in the second cycle, we've got a lot of green bars telling us to buy. And the red zone here, as you can see, was exactly at the top there. And then the green zone, down here was telling us to buy one more time at the low points. And the red line here was telling us to get off at the 64,000. And one more time, another accurate picture here at the 15,400, where this green zone was hitting us. So if we move this to the left a little bit, what we're really waiting for is a red line anywhere around these levels here. So whenever we get a red line here, just like these previous ones, 
that will tell us the top of the bull market. So that's our Bexit indicator for today. And as you can see, there's no red line here, so we're nowhere near it. So just keep enjoying the run and the ride wherever that's going to end. And for those of you who've been trying to join the Bitcoin Miners Club, the private member section that I run here, which focuses entirely on the Bitcoin miners, I'm sorry if you've been disappointed and not been able to get in because the numbers are now full and membership is now only on the basis that when one person leaves, that opens up a space for one person to get in. I know quite a few of you tried and failed, but if you keep trying that you may well get in when one of the members cancels in there. Okay, I've been getting a few comments over the last few videos to show the swing trades that we did last year. Just to let you know, in this cycle, now that we're coming to the last 6 to 12 months of the bull market, we've stopped doing the swing trades. And this is one of the reasons why I stopped showing the swing trades from last year. So for those people who are interested in joining the private member section where we cover the Bitcoin miners, these were our swing trades from March 2023. And these were our results here on some of these miners that we actually went into for swing trades. So that was round one in March 2023. Then in July, we went into the second round and these were based on the Bitcoin 60 day cycles. And then we achieved these results here. Then in round three in August 2023, we were stopped out unfortunately. So we lost our fees on that one. And then further on round four, back in October, we got these results here. And the round five back in December 2023, this is where I realized that we were now switching over to a parabolic part of the bull market, i.e. the last six to 12 months. So we had two parts to this trade. The first part gives a profit of 24.6. And the second part, which was really confirming that the market is now changing against swing trades, gives a minus 18%. So we were about par for the course on the last trade. So this is where I decided that the swing trades were really now coming to the end and we have to switch strategy. And this is very important to do. People can get dictated by the pattern of trading. So as you can see, we've done really well up to that point and it's very easy to continue. But what we did was we switched over from swing trades into ratio trades, which is far more safer and still gives us a lot of dynamism to try and increase the number of units between the Bitcoin miners. And as I showed you in last week's video, these are our ratio trades that we played since the beginning of 2024, even though in 2023, I was doing ratio trades as well, but not in the member section. I wanted to see how they worked out before I introduced this to the members. And since January, you can see we've done about 11 trades, the last one being last week. And within the period of just 10 days here, we went from 2,257 marathon units where we bought into CleanSpark, there were these number of units. And then we bought back the marathon here from 2,257 to 2,798. So that gave us an extra 541 units within a period of 10 days doing these ratio trades. And how that translates into profits, as you can see, the closing price for marathon on Friday was $16.50. So an extra 541 units multiplied by $16.50. So in a period of 10 days, that one ratio trade gave a profit of $8,926. And we do two videos per week on a Wednesday and a Friday. And this Wednesday, I will be covering more potential ratio trades between four different miners. So virtually every one of these trades has been quite successful. So if you look at the first trade here, 24th of January, 2024, we moved 1,851 marathon units and bought into these amount of units, 13,208 of the cipher. And that was a ratio between the two of 713. And just a couple months later, I sold 11,668 of those units. So less than this, so I'd bought 13,000, but sold less at 11,668 and bought back Marathon 2,361. So we started off with 1,851, buying 13,000, selling less, i.e. 11,000, and still managing to buy an increase in the number of units here because the ratio was playing in our favor here. So that one ratio trade using less of the cipher number of units still gave us 510 more extra units, which if you multiply that by 1650, gives you another profit of 8,000. So you can see with a series of differentials, i.e. ratio differences between the miners, you can make an incredible number of extra units 
so that when we get the bull market in full flow and the Bitcoin miners are actually playing a leverage play and these extra units will be playing also on a leverage play and these are extra to what we normally have which is a passive portfolio so we have two portfolios in the member section one is a passive one where we've chosen our Bitcoin miners and we're going to run with that to the end of the bull market but as an alternative we're doing a dynamic trading portfolio where we do these ratio trades and try when we can. They don't happen overnight. You can see we've only done 11 trades in four months. And sometimes you can go two months without a trade. If you don't have the patience, this doesn't work. Okay, so we'll leave it there. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, then please do remember to click the like button and to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.